when they shall pray toward this place, and hear you in where? Heaven, your dwelling place. Heaven, listen to the words of Solomon, heaven is God's dwelling place. That is where he dwells. So is there a God in heaven? Or is heaven just a place named in the Bible? God dwelling place is heaven. Solomon is still praying. Praise God. He says here, Praise the Lord. It is good to be with you today on Shekinah. I hope you had a great week with your family. And I have just two little uh, greetings to bring forth before we pray. Praise God. Mikhail, I would like to wish you a very, very happy birthday. May God continue to richly bless you and keep you. And may the Lord grant you a year of glorious victories. And that's in Jesus' mighty name. And we love you, Mikhail, and thank you for all you do. Praise God. Now, uh, Antoinette, I would really like to wish you, Antoinette, a very, very, very happy birthday. You're my beautiful, beautiful friend, long time. And Antoinette, I want you to know I love you dearly, and you continue to stand strong in Jesus' mighty name. And may you have a year of, of glorious, glorious excitement spiritually. May the Lord grant to you health and strength always. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and grant you with glorious victories all year. And it's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. I love you, Antoinette, and God bless you. Thank you again. We're going to come in agreement right now for the program. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, today we give you praise and we give you thanks. We worship you, we bless you, and we thank you, dear God. Right now, dear God, as myself and your people, mighty God, who are viewing this pro program, we come in agreement for the program today. And we are asking now, mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name, that you will prepare their hearts. Uh, break up the fallow ground of their hearts and prepare their hearts, mighty God, with fertile soil, so that as this word go forth, it will take root and it will bear fruit. Uh, and it will bring forth much fruit, fruit in Jesus' mighty name. Today, your blessings upon all your children. May the good Lord bless them and keep them. May the good Lord open up their spiritual eyes, their spiritual ears, their spiritual understanding. Mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name. And we know that in the name of Jesus, as this word of God go forth, it will accomplish that which you purpose it for, and it will not return void. I thank you for your presence and your anointing another time. I pray for unction and divine utterance. And mighty God, may the Holy Spirit now have his way. Because without the Holy Spirit, I cannot stand here. My God, I need your precious Holy Spirit now more than ever. And it's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to go now to Genesis. Genesis 28. And we will go to, sorry, Genesis chapter, chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. And I would really, really like you to know that there is a heaven that is real. There is a hell that is real, and there is a heaven that is real. Today, we are going to... I'm going to bring the most important, what should I say? The most important, I mean all of God's word are very, very important. 
and it's beautiful and um, it's glorious. God's word is everything. Without, without it, we cannot get by. God's word is everything. But, you know, I would like you to know that the most glorious word in scripture is heaven. And I thank God that in the scriptures that the, the Lord spoke so many times about heaven. And just as hell is real, heaven is real, but the, require, the, the requirements for heaven is very, very, very serious. And the only way that you can make heaven is to be born again, washed in the blood, and in Jesus' mighty name, from Genesis to, from Genesis to Revelation, it has everything in here that you need to know and you need to live and you need to walk in order to make heaven. Praise God. So again, we know that heaven is real. So we're going to go now to the word. Thank you, Jesus. Genesis 1, 1 to 9. Genesis 1, 1 to 19. Praise God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The very first word in scripture, the very, very first word, the very first verse, sorry, in scripture is the, you, you read there the word heaven. You read about heaven there. So in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So heaven is real. I would like to entitle this message, heaven is very real. It is not a myth. It is real. Now let's go to verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. Now, here is the word again for the second time. And God called the firmament heaven heaven. Praise God. And the heaven and the morning, and the evening and the morning, sorry, were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the day, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. Now, we've seen here the word heaven again. That this, that's the third time it's mentioned. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, and the herb yielding seed, and the fruit, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the light, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years. Here is the word heavens again. And let them be for lights in the firmament, in the firmament of the heaven, to give light from the earth, and it was so. Here is the word 
heaven again. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Of course, this is referring to their function. So we see the word heaven again. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Now, right through, as we were reading, you have seen the word heaven. There are lots of people, you know, think that, you know, you die and you, you, go, you go back into the earth. You know, they, they would dig that, that hole six feet and they put you down there. And p- people, you know, they think that's it. They think that's it. That's not it. There is life. There is life after death. But listen, there are only two places that you can go after you die. The child of God, who is born again, washed in the blood, have a relationship with Jesus, live according to scriptures, they are bound for heaven when they die. All right? Their spirit would go straight there straight to heaven. Then you have those that do not want God. They just want to play church. They, many of them are outside there. They have God, yes. They talk about God. I'm talking about the heathen now. They're ungodly. They talk about God, but I must tell you, God is far from their heart. It's like the Lord said to the, to the Israelites, You serve me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. And you know, many, many people talk about God. And they think that, you know, many of them think that they are, they live a very good life. They don't, they don't steal. They don't murder. They don't do drugs. They don't, you know, commit adultery and fornicate. They're not in anything. Many, many think that because they live a good life, they'll make it. I would like you to know, good works can't get you there. All right? Good works cannot get you there. The Bible says, it's not by works, lest any man shall boast. Salvation is a gift of God. So you need to understand, you have to be born again. You have to accept Jesus to get there. Now, many, many also think that you know, oh, let me live up, let me live my life. I'm young and I need to live a full life. Well, I have news for you. The Bible says, despise not your youth. Okay? Whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're rich, without, whether you're poor, whether you're man, whether you're woman, boy or girl, you need Jesus to make heaven. You need Christ. And no matter what you say or think, If you do not serve the Lord, if you're not born again, if you do not live according to this word, you are going straight to hell. And that is tragic because you are a fool to make that choice. You know, just neglect God and serve the devil. Listen, the devil comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. But Jesus came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So you have a free moral choice to choose. Praise God. God will never force his will on anyone. You have to make that choice. You know, what do you want in life? The most important decision that you can ever make on the face of this earth right now, okay? The most important decision It's to serve Jesus. It's to serve the Lord. You got to get it right and quickly. Because listen, Jesus is about to return. What will you do? He can come in right now. What are you going to do if you're not ready? He will take his people, the church, the body of Christ, 
the true church, of course, the true church, because now you have all kinds out there. He will take his true church, his true, true born-again people that have been living and walking, and he will, you know, he will, that glorious rapture will take place, so he will rapture the church. What are you going to do if you're left behind? Look at the movies, all right? Look at the, the movies. There is one called Left Behind. You can get all these things at your hand reach so easy, so easily. You have no excuse. You can look at the rapture. There are so many out there you can look at. Praise God. Don't be foolish, all right? Educate yourself spiritually. Know and understand, you know, what, what you have to do at this point because it's time. Time is running out. Jesus is coming. Get ready. Be ready. And I'm not talking about any wishy-washy, you know, kind of walk with God. I'm talking about you get serious with God and you live according to the word. Amen. Now let's go to Exodus. Heaven is very real. Praise the Lord. Exodus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, uh, before we go to, to Exodus, maybe we should keep with Genesis until I, I, I bring to you these two scriptures. All right? These few scriptures. Let's go to Genesis again, chapter 28, and we will go from verse 10. Genesis 28 from verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. Praise God. And he stopped at a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Praise God. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Praise God. So Jacob was alone here, and, you know, he stopped at this place to, to take a rest. And he put some stones there to make some pillows, I guess, um, to, you know, to get his head high up, but to, to, you know, perform the work of a pillow. That's, you, you know what I mean. And he dreamed. He started to dream. Now, here's the word heaven. He dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, and behold, the angels of God ascending and descending. Praise God. Now, this is very, very interesting. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, and the land wherein, whereon you lie, to you will I give it unto your seed. And your seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, and to the north and to the south. And in you and in your seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with you and will keep you in all places where you go and will bring you again into this land, for I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken to you. Now, we see very, very clearly, you know, all that is going on here. That Jacob had that vision. And here, God is so, so, so good that, you know, he just revealed himself. And, uh, you know, the story is so beautiful. Jacob had a divine encounter with God. And, uh, you know, these last words here really, really bless me. And I hope it's a blessing to you. 
verse 15. Behold, I'm with you. I want you to know God will never leave you nor forsake you. He will always be with you to the very end. He says here, I will keep you in all places. All right? Now, God will not only be with you. God said he will keep you. It is such a blessing to be kept by the Lord. Such a blessing. You know, if only you can surrender your heart and life to Christ, you know, and just yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, the Lord will keep you. Praise God. And he said he will keep you in all places where you go. Look at this. He said, he will bring you again into this land. And he said, I will not leave you until I have done. Look at the word, that which I have spoken to you. Many, many, many of you out there, you are living sincerely for God. You know you had many, many dreams and visions. You know you're paying a dear price to serve God. When I say a dear price, to walk upright, to walk in holiness and righteousness, it is a dear price. Praise God. You have to live such a sanctified life. The word sanctified means to be set apart. You have to be, you know, live such a sanctified life. You are, you don't, you don't you, you're set apart from the world. You are in the world but you're not of the world. You are set apart unto God. You live that life for the Lord, and you live and walk in 100% obedience. I'm going to get to the point. Don't give up. I know many, many Christians who are persevering and who are living, you know, that pure life. They have had many dreams in their lives. And you say, well, Maybe God forget, God has forgotten me. No, no, no. No, no, no. Look at this verse. He has not forgotten you. He said to Jacob, I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken to you. Does God speak to people? Yes. If you are in tune with God, he, you will hear him. All right? We have many, many voices, but you will know his voice because he says, my sheep know my voice, and no other will they hear. So you will know his voice. And these words are so, so precious. God will not leave you. He will be with you to the end. Every dream you have, every promise that God has given you, all will come to pass. Praise God. And I'm going to tell you, he's a God to his word. He never changes. All will come to pass. If you were living in sin, for many, many years, and you have repented, and you're back now on track. Many of you, you know, you realize that Jesus is coming, and you have repented, you know, of all your sins, what you have done in the past years, and you are back on track. You know, stay on track. Don't lose heart. You say, even though I wasn't living and walking, will God grant to me all the dreams that I've dreamed? Yes, he will. He's a merciful God. He's a loving God. If you study the life of Jacob, you would see, you, the word Jacob means supplanter, all right? And we all know that Jacob's name, he had a name change. His name was changed from Jacob to Israel when he had that encounter with God. And, you know, so he had that name change, you know, the, what, what Israel means, you know, prince with God. God is so good. And God will give you that strength and that grace, and all your dreams will come through. And it's not long. Everything God will do what he has promised to you. You know why? Guess what? The time is short. He's coming back. And he's going to be doing a quick work. He will do such a quick work in you. And everything will come to a close. You just watch what God will do. Do not give up. Stand strong. Now, we're going to go to Solomon. Yeah, the book of, uh, we're going to go to the Solomon's prayer. 1 Kings chapter 8. One, oh no. I am so sorry. I skipped one. 
I'm, I'm skipping all the time. So we are going to go to Exodus before we go to Solomon's prayer. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. And we will go from verse 22 and 23. Just two verses. Exodus 20. 22 and 23. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus shall you say unto the children of Israel, You have seen that I have talked with you from where? Heaven. God has spoken to Moses where? From heaven. Here's the word heaven again. Praise God. You shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall you make unto you gods of gold. Praise God. I won't go into that now, but your silver gods and your gold gods and your wood gods and all your stone gods can't help you because they can't see, they can't hear, and they can't talk. All right? I'm not saying, you know, um, that, you know, this is what really it means. God is talking here to Moses. And what God was saying to Moses, you know, in just a little praisey form, you know, he was saying that, no image. Many, many of us, you know, that's what this means. Many, many of us try to make an image of God. Some of you make him, his image white, and some of you make his image black, and some of you make his image, you know, Chinese, and some of you make his image whatever, whatever. That's foolish. It is very foolish. Praise God. And the, 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 this one is saying, no image must be made of what you think about God. Praise the Lord. None must be made of silver or gold. It will be grossly wrong. Praise God. So you don't make an image of God. All right? God is God, and he will always be God. We see here the word heaven in verse 22. Now we're going to go to 1 Kings. 1 Kings. So let's go to 1 Kings, um, and we will go to chapter 8. Now, all I want you to see, uh, Solomon built a temple unto the Lord. And of course, the temple is finished. And they are going to be dedicating the temple unto the Lord. And I would like you to hear Solomon's prayer. And I would like you to take note of many, many times the word heaven is mentioned here. Okay, so bear with me, I will read. Praise God. 1 Kings chapter 8 from verse 22. Here is Solomon's prayer. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven. Here's the word heaven. Solomon is praying, right? They're dedicating the temple, and he's praying to God. Heaven is mentioned here. Verse 23, and he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven or on earth beneath, who keeps covenant and mercy with your servants, who walk before you with all their heart. Here is the word, heaven again. This is number two. Second time, who has kept with your servant David, my father, that you promised him? You spoke also, you spoke also with your mouth and have fulfilled it with your hand as is this day. Therefore now, Lord God, Solomon is praying. Therefore now, Lord God of Israel, keep with your servant David, my father, that you promised him, saying, There shall not fail you a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, so that your children take heed to their way, and that they walk before me as you have walked before me. Praise God. And now, O God of Israel, let your word, I pray you, be verified, which you spoke unto your servant David, my father, now, again, you can see Solomon is praying because he's saying, let my word, I pray you. He is still praying the prayer here of dedication. Praise God to dedicate the temple. 
But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold the heaven and heaven of heavens. In one verse, three times the word heaven is mentioned. Behold the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain you, how much less this house that I have built. Praise God. Yet, have you respect unto the prayer of your servant and to his supplication, O Lord, my God, to hearken unto the cry of the prayer, to the prayer which your servant prays before you today? Solomon is still praying. Listen carefully. That your eyes may be open towards this house night and day, even toward the place of which you have said, My name shall be there, that you may hearken unto the prayer which your servant shall make toward this place. And hearken you to the supplication of your servant, of your temple, Israel, of your people Israel, when they shall pray toward this place and hear you in where? Heaven, your dwelling place. Heaven, listen to the words of Solomon, heaven is God's dwelling place. That is where he dwells. So is there a God in heaven? Or is heaven just a place named in the Bible? God dwelling place is heaven. Solomon is still praying. Praise God. He says here, that your eyes may be open toward this place, this house, night and day, even toward the place which you have said. My name shall be there, that you may hearken unto the prayer which your servant shall make toward this place. Verse 30, and hearken you to the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel, when they shall pray toward this place and hear you in heaven, your dwelling place. And when you hear, forgive. Does God forgive? Yes. God forgive then, and he's still forgiving today. He's still merciful. No matter what you are, no matter who you are, no matter the color of your skin, God loves you. He gave his life for you, and he's merciful to give, to forgive, if you call on his name, he will hear, he will forgive you, and he will answer you. Praise God. If any man trespass against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear, and the oath come before your altar in this house, then hear you in heaven, and do, and judge your servants, condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness. It is very clear here in scripture, whatsoever man sow, that shall he reap. Solomon prayed it here out loud. He said the wicked must suffer for their wrongdoing and the righteous, you know, will be blessed always. Verse 33, when your people Israel be smitten down before the enemy because they have sinned against you and shall turn again to you and confess your name and pray and make supplication unto you in this house. Then hear you in heaven. Here's the word heaven again. This is more than one dozen times thus far you're hearing the word heaven. Then hear you in heaven and forgive the sin of your people, Israel, and bring them again unto the land which you gave unto their fathers. 35. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, if they pray toward this place and confess your name and turn from their sins, when you afflict them, 
here is the word heaven again, then hear you in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants and of your people Israel that you teach them the good way wherein they should walk and give rain upon your land which you have given to your people for an inheritance. This, the, Solomon is praying here and he's saying, God, if they have rebelled against you, and the heavens is shut up. Many, many times, you know, we rebel against God. And spiritually, the heaven is shut up. We don't even hear God. You can't hear God when you're living in sin anyways. Praise God. Because God says, because of your iniquities, I will not hear you. So you can't hear from God when you are having a ball out there with Satan. Right? You have to come in right standing again. That is why Solomon is praying this prayer while he's dedicating the temple unto the Lord, and he's saying, God, if they, if they sin, in other words, if they rebel, when they pray in this house, hear and answer, because you're a God that hears in the heavens. That is his dwelling place. You say, well, what about us? You know, what about us? They, well, you know that once you're born again, washed in the blood, the kingdom of God now is within. All right? In the Old Testament, when God has to speak, when the Holy Spirit is speaking, you know, God would move upon people. In the new covenant now, once you are born again and washed in the blood, the kingdom of God is in you. You receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, so the kingdom of God is within you. However, let's not get there. Let me not get into that. Let me go on. So heaven is mentioned, 37, 36. Okay, no, 37. If there be in the land famine, and if there be pestilence, blasting mildew, locust, or if there be caterpillar, if, there, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all your people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and spread forth his hand towards this house. Then hear you in heaven your dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart you know. For you, even you only, Know the hearts of all the children of men. Here is the word heaven again. And it is very, very clear here what Solomon is praying. Again, Solomon is still praying. Let's go on. Verse 40. That they may fear you all the days that they live in the land which you gave unto our fathers. Praise God. Solomon anticipates here that a godly fear will be the result of, forgive, of forgiveness and restoration. Praise God. When you see God forgive you, you continue to pray and ask God for a godly fear to come upon you. And trust me, when you are restored and forgiven, you need to fear God. You need the fear of God. Praise the Lord. Moreover, Concerning a stranger, meaning a Gentile, who is not of your people, Israel, but comes out of a far country for your name's sake. For they shall hear of your great name and of your strong hand and of your stretched out arm when he shall come and pray toward this house. Praise God. Now, I want you to see the love as Solomon is dedicating the temple that he has built unto the Lord. He is not only praying for the Jews here, he's also praying for the Gentiles. Praise God. He was not selfish with his prayer. Hear you in heaven, verse 43, your dwelling place. Now, I must point out to you here again and again, I must say this, all right? And you're gonna hear it all the time until I'm finished. Solomon, is being specific again and again with his prayer. Many times we're praying, we're not specific. 
and you can't be all over the place in prayer. Praying is my hobby. And I can tell you, when it comes to prayer, okay, you can't miss. You have to be specific with God. And he's very, very specific. He's saying, hear you in heaven. And he, he is very repetitious here in this, in this chapter because he's saying, from your dwelling place, praise God. He keeps repeating that all the time. There is a heaven and it's very real. Praise God. And to do according to all that the stranger calls to you for, that all people of the earth may know your name to fear you, as do your people Israel, and that they may know that this house, which I have built, is called by your name. Your people go out to battle against their enemy. If your people go out to battle against their enemy, whithersoever you shall send them, and shall pray unto the Lord toward the city which you have chosen, that's Jerusalem, and toward the house, the temple, of course, that I have built for your name. Then hear you in heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. Here is the word heaven again. If they sin against you, verse 46, for there is no man who sins not, and you be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land where they were carried captives, and repent, and make supplication unto you in the land of them, who carried them captive, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. Praise God. And so return unto you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto you toward their land, which you gave unto their fathers, the city which you have chosen, and the house which I have built for your name. Then hear you their prayer and their supplication in heaven, your dwelling place, and maintain their cause. Here is Solomon praying again. Here's the word heaven, and here's the words dwelling place. That's where God dwells. That's where he is. Praise God. And forgive your people who have sinned against you and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against you and give them compassion before them who carry them captive that they may have compassion on them. Praise God. Forgiveness and compassion, praise God, are the hallmarks of the grace of Almighty God. For they be your people and your inheritance, which you brought forth out of Egypt from the midst of the furnace of iron, that your eyes may be opened unto the supplication of your servant and unto the supplication of your prayer Israel, to hearken unto them in all that they call for unto you. For you did separate them from among all the people of the earth to be your inheritance as you spoke by the hand of Moses, your servant, when you brought our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. Praise God. I want you to note something here. All right? The Jews, God's children, they are very, 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 special to God. You don't mess with the Jews. All through scriptures, they have failed God miserably. And I must add this, they are failing God up to this day because, you know, they don't want to, to you know, to accept the Messiah. They don't want to accept he came and, and that he's, you know, they believe that, you know, he, he is coming, but they don't want to accept he came already. And he dwell on this earth 
you know, among men as flesh, in flesh. He was very God and very man. And unto this day, many of them are rebelling. But I want you to know today, no matter how rebellious they are, all right, God in Scripture, so many times he would say that he would, you know, give up on them and he would abandon them and, you know, oh, but I'm going to tell you this. God always comes back and say, they are his people. They are his beloved. They are God's chosen people. And don't mess with the Jews. No matter what they do, God will always forgive them. And when you see the battle of Armageddon starts, which is in the middle of the great tribulation period, when the battle of Armageddon, Armageddon cards starts, Jesus, the Messiah, will put his appearance in, and they will recognize that he is the Messiah, and they will go on their knees, and they will cry out to God, and they will repent for all the years that they have missed it. They will behold with their very eyes that he came, that he will come with the raptured saints and all the saints before the rapture. He will come with all his saints and they will behold him in power and great glory and he will fight for his people. God will never, ever, ever give up on Israel. Though many times it's mentioned in scripture that way, but God will have mercy he will have mercy. They will behold him with their very, very eyes. And they will accept him as the Messiah then. Until then, many, many of you, you know, you're listening and you're a Jew. Don't wait for the great tribulation period. It's not going to be pretty. If you're Jewish and you're listening, make it right with the Messiah now so that you can make the rapture and save yourself from the great tribulation. Praise God. You can accept the Messiah and get saved. Be born again and serve him now. Praise God, because he is coming soon. And the, the rapture, I'm talking about the rapture. The rapture is, is mid, you know, it's in the, what should I say, mid, mid heaven, mid sky, in, in, the, in the skies, okay? He will come up to there, not to earth. In the Great Tribulation period, in the, mi in the middle of the, it, the Great Tribulation period, he's coming on the earth. Praise God. You will see him with your very eyes. Don't wait for them. Accept him now. So when the rapture takes place in mid-air, you will meet him in the air. Amen. God is good. Now, and it was so, verse 54, I'm, I'm, I'm near finished here. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying, now remember, all this time, Solomon is praying. When he had made an end of, of his praying, all this prayer and supplication unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees, with his hands spread up to heaven. Here's the word heaven again. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be the Lord who has given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised. There has not filled one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers, let him not leave us nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments which he commanded our fathers. And let these my words wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord be near unto the Lord, our God, day and night, that he maintained the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times as the matter shall require, that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none other. Let your heart, therefore, be perfect with the Lord our God to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments 
as at this day. Now, he, this last verse, this is how he closed the prayer, and then they're going to go now to their sacrifices. So I want to stop at verse 61 here. Let your heart, the hearts of the people of Israel and all people of this world, because the word is for everyone, therefore be perfect. God wants us to have a perfect heart. You say nobody can have that. Listen, if the word of God says it, God will keep you. If you want to walk pure, you can walk pure. To the pure, all things are pure. Praise God. You can walk pure. Therefore, be perfect with the Lord our God. To what? Walk in his statues. To walk in the word, that's what it means. And to keep his commandments as at this day. Praise the Lord. And to keep his word. Everything that this Bible says, that you have to do, you have to keep his word. You have to walk it. You have to live it. Praise God. Now, I would like you to know that the second part of this message, I'm going to bring it next week. So this message here has two parts, okay? Now, what I would like you to, to, to know today, you say, well, Pastor Jean, why do you spend time reading all of this? Many people do not understand. Many people do not read the Word of God. All right? They would rather sit with a magazine or some novel or something and read, but they will not read the Scriptures. All right? How there is a hell and it's real, there is a heaven and it's real. You have to make your choice, all your choices in life, and do them quickly, but let that be priority. Serving Jesus, serving the Messiah is priority now. Everything in this whole wide world is coming to a close. Everything. And heaven is mentioned. You cannot say that you haven't heard. And the reason why I read it is for the sake of those who don't like to read the Bible and they don't know nothing about Scripture. Praise God. If you don't read the Bible, you will never have hope. If you don't read the Bible, you will never have faith in God. If you don't read your Bible, you will never know what the Scripture is saying for you. We have an inheritance in Christ, and you will know what your inheritance is if you read the Bible. But many don't like to read the Bible. That is why I spend so much time to read the scriptures to you today. May God richly bless you. We're going to pray. And for those of you who do not know Jesus, I would like you to accept him as your Lord and Savior now. Pray after me. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I do repent. I now ask you, Lord, to come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. And Lord, I thank you for giving me another chance. Now that I know heaven is real, I want to make heaven. I do not want to go to hell. And Father God, help me to live according to the scriptures, to make it. And in Jesus' mighty name, let me serve you diligently. My God, with all my heart, in Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. All you Christians out there, you know, you are so backslidden. You just, you just got tired. And you know, you are living it up. You just got tired waiting on the Lord. But you don't have to be tired anymore. He is coming. He is coming. Look around you, and you will see with your very eyes. If you understand, once you're in the Word, you will understand the signs of the times. Right now, Jesus is coming to the church, like the message I preached the other day, before he comes for the church. God has to judge the church because too much going on. It's happening all over. Don't be blind, all right? The true test of a prophet is what he speaks 
must come to pass. You heard the messages. It's all in your face. It's happening. All over. We must pray now more than ever for our brothers and sisters who are being exposed because of sin. We must pray for them sincerely that they will make a comeback to God. God loves them. All right? Don't pray harsh prayers as in, oh, you know, they did it, they have to go to hell. No, 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 no. You pray for them. Pray for them. Because you don't know when you're going to fall. You pray for them. Jesus is coming. So let's pray. You have backslidden. You have gone far from God. We're going to pray right now. You will renew your covenant with God. In Jesus' name. Fa repeat after me. Father God, I have sinned against you. As a child of God, I went astray. But Lord, I'm coming back home now. And like the prodigal, Father God, in Jesus' name, I surrender all. I have gone far from you. But Lord, I love you. And I know that you will have mercy and you will forgive me. Solomon prayed it in his prayer when he was dedicating the temple. He made it very clearly in so, so many times. He said it. And if your people have sinned, when they come, forgive and heal them. When they come to you and repent, have mercy upon them. And Lord, we are spiritual Israelites, all believers in Christ. We are, you, that, that was... Gentile, we have been grafted in, mighty God, but we are spiritual Israelites too. And Father God, you love the Jews and you love us too, and have mercy and forgive. Today I renew my covenant with God and come into my heart afresh and give me the grace now to live pure. And as Solomon pray, that my heart will be perfect. I will walk in your statues. I will, I will. Obey the commandments of the Lord. And Father God, just help me. Help me. Help me to surrender and to walk in obedience to your word to you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God richly bless you. We love you. And you have a great week.